Who is here? Hey, everyone. <laughs> hey. <laughs> If you can see me clearly, and if you can hear me clearly, please drop a comment. Let's be sure that we are together in this. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> so leave a comment, let me be sure. You can hear me, you can see me clearly, everything is all clear, I'm ready. So please leave a comment. Can you see me, can you hear me? Welcome everyone. Welcome, 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 welcome. Super, super glad to have you here. Please leave a comment. You can see me great, if you came, welcome. Alex, welcome, Emmanuel, welcome. Yay, <laughs> welcome everyone, Timothy, welcome. I'm so excited. Obina, welcome. Who said men don't attend conferences? I love this. Welcome, Sarah, welcome, good evening. I'm super excited to have you here. You're just joining us, welcome. So Chukuma, welcome. Precious, welcome. Oh dear, welcome. Yes, 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 drop the comments. Yes, welcome everyone. Welcome to IYM Reloaded Conference 2022, Young Men's Editions. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Thank you. Thank you. Bring all the vibes. Yeah, give you a welcome. Chidi, welcome. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited. I wish I can. I wish I can be able to show you my heart right now. But this is a reality. And I just thank God. This is a day that the Lord has made. And we, are, we rejoice and be glad in it. And so I wanted to bring your excitement. I wanted to show your joy. She reflects in your comments. I wanted to bring energy, energy everywhere. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, depending on the part of the world you're tuning in for. And let's start. We just want to know how many we are, the, where we are tuning in from. So please leave a comment. I just want to know how widespread we are. So I want you to share your city and the country you're um, tuning in from. So for example, I'm in Lagos, Nigeria. So Lagos, Nigeria, I'm in Nigeria, Ontario, Canada, I'm in the UK, I'm in Accra, Ghana. So let's just leave it, just begin to leave the comments. Where are you tuned in from? Just share us your city and your country. Welcome, welcome, so exciting. Thank you, welcome, Victor, welcome. Yes, welcome everyone. Welcome. So good, so good. Welcome everyone. I'm super excited to have you here. Amazing. Kaduna Enugu um, Gombe. Amazing. Benin City. Abuja. Oh, great. We are my Lagos people. Amazing. Welcome. Enugu. Uh, is Enugu seems to be leading. Welcome. Joss. Amazing. Welcome everyone. Everyone in states. Great, great, great. So glad, so glad to have you guys. So glad, so glad. Welcome you all, welcome. And it's not late to invite your friends to come and join us. Um, you can share the YouTube link and tell them dive in. We can't wait to start. Welcome, Lagos, yes, yes, yes. My Lagos people are here. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, great, great, great. And so my name is on the screen, but I'll introduce myself still. Um, my name is Chinazo Cynthia Ogo. I am the host of this conference <laughs> and the founder of Ensure Your Marriage Community, which is the community, the platform hosting this conference. And so in case you're wondering what IYM Reloaded means, that's what IYM means, Ensure Your Marriage. And so this is a community I started in 2018 and it's just a tribe of spirit filled men and women who are propelled by their close work with God and their minds renewed in the word and they're armed with a strong body to use their marriages as platforms to fulfill kingdom adding there. And we are taxed with this mission to raise kingdom marriage ambassadors who will preach this gospel of kingdom marriages with their own lives, with their own marriages, and of course, in words. But don't, don't worry, this conference is not just about relationship and marriage, it's actually loaded. So in case you're wondering what the conference is all about. So of course, the theme of the conference is 
good men are hard to find. Is that true? Every single time I pose this question, every single time people get to see the flyer, there's always a um, mixed comment. Some people will say, yes, good men are hard to find. Some people will say, yeah, no, good men are not hard to find. But guess what? I personally think that both, both parties are correct. <laughs> I think you're correct, right? Good men, sometimes it may look like good men are hard to find. And the reason is this, Good men are not just products of coincidences. They are actually made, they are trained, they are pruned, they are prepared, they are equipped, they are empowered. And this is what this conference is all about. This is like a first installment, what God wants to do in your life. So regardless of whether you perceive yourself to be a good man or not, God wants to bring you here and prepare you. God wants to heal you. God wants to teach you. God wants to empower you. And so this conference is loaded. We've prayed so much. And I, I trust the Lord to do his thing. And so I really hope you have some expectations. I really hope you prepare yourself. I really hope you have your journal. You have your pen. You have your earpiece or headphone. And you found a very great corner in your house, your room or office, depending on where you're streaming in from. And you're ready to receive. This is not just a casual conference. This is a meeting God wants to have with his sons. All right. And so it's not just about the host. It's not about the community. And it's not even about the speakers. Regardless of the reason why you came here, I want you to perceive it to be a meeting point with God. I want you to see it like I am here to meet with God. I want you to see that I'm here to hear from my father. I'm here to find answers to questions. I'm here to be equipped. I'm here for my mindset to change. But that is it. We, ex we are praying for mindset shift. And so one thing I normally teach people in my community, don't be in a hurry to reject the new information. Don't be quick to disagree with something you don't agree with because that's how mindset shifts happen. And more often than not, if you're not seeing, if you're not seeing a progress in your life, it's most likely you lack wisdom there. And this is why God is calling for this meeting because he wants to impact you with wisdom. He wants to impact you with wisdom as it pertains to your spirituality. I don't know that you've seen the lineup of speakers and the topics we have um, for this conference, but God has you in mind. He's calling, paying attention to your spirituality. There's something about your emotional health because this is so a topic that is rarely discussed for men. I mean, men also have emotions. Men get hurt. Men get broken. I'm very sure you can agree with me. And so God has you in mind. Of course, there's going to be topics on relationship and marriage. Why wouldn't there be? And so our God is just like a, a holistic conference. So this next eight days is eight days of transformation, eight days of change, eight days of transfiguration. Eight days of empowerment. God wants to anoint people. God wants to place crowns on his sons. He wants to establish them as kings and priests into their rightful place of authority. And so I'm here for all of, all of it. And I'm so sure you're also excited. It's still not late for you to um, um, let, invite your friends, share the links, tell them to come on board. We're about to start, right? We're about to start. So I'm seeing people from different parts of the world, different parts of Nigeria. Welcome, you guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so, so excited. I'm so excited. So that's basically what this conference is all about. Empowerment, equipment, nurturing, healing. And so expect anything, really. Expect the power of God. Expect the anointing of God. Expect templates handed to you. Expect blueprints handed to you. Expect instructions handed to you. Expect that your eyes are open to recognize your teachers, your mentors, your fathers. You know, one of the things God wants to do, he wants to connect fathers to sons. And so this is one of the things he said expressly. People will find destiny connections, firebrand alliances after this conference. And so I really pray that your eyes are opened your eyes are open, so skills will fall. You recognize people after this conference. We're praying for encounters. This is not just a normal online thing. No, this is a meeting with God. Okay, so I really want you to position yourself, position your heart, ready to receive. Okay, so let me know if you're ready. Type in the comment section, I am ready for what the Lord is ready for. I am ready for what the Lord is ready for. God is ready sincerely. I've just been waiting for us. So let me know if you're ready. Let me know if you're excited. Let me know if you're eager to receive 
all that the Lord has for you. So drop it in the comment section. Let me know if you're excited and if you can't wait. So let guess, yes, yes, I'm ready. I'm ready for what the Lord is ready for. So welcome, welcome. And so we just go straight into um, prayers. Um, this is, of course, a very spiritual conference. And we just want to stroll in casually. And so I really want you to pray for yourself. I really want you to pray for yourself. Pray for yourself and prepare the soil of your heart. One thing I've come to realize is that the, the word of God is an incorruptible seed. More often than not, is pure, is potent, is powerful. The problem is always the soil in which it is planted. And this is why two persons can attend the exact conference. Two persons can hear the same word. One person will walk away empowered. One person will walk away transformed. Another person seems to have just wasted time and data. I don't want that to be your case. So I really want to begin to pray for yourself. I want you to pray for yourself. Just imagine yourself. Thank God is even online. It's not like it's a, um, a, a physical meeting. And so it's just you and God. I just want you to begin to pray for yourself and ask the Lord to speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. I'm here. I'm just here. I want it to just be me and you. Speak to me clearly in the language you understand. Begin to talk to me. I want specific answers. I want customized word, a customized word, God. Just me. I, I'm here for everything. Everything you have in store for me. I'm here for it. I don't want to miss any portion of it. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray for yourself. That my heart, that the word that God is going to plant in it, that I'm going to mix it with faith. It will be stolen from my heart. The cares of this life will not shook it out of my heart. In the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we thank you for your sons. Thank you for what you were set to do. Thank you for what you were set to do. We give you praise. Manon, Shikari, Banana Dobbs. And I will just say just a couple of confessions before we start. Our speaker is here. Um, just a couple of confessions and we're good to go. And so just say, repeat after me. As I sit to listen to the word of God today, I listen under the influence of the Holy Spirit and I'm not distracted by anything or anyone. The mysteries of God's kingdom are revealed to me. And therefore, I have perceived distinctly all that I must do and who I must become. My eyes see clearly, my ears hear clearly, my heart is full of understanding. Say in the name of Jesus, my mind is captured by the thoughts of God. My body is baptized in supernatural strength. My spirit man is engulfed with a hunger for God. I will never be the same again. I declare I am ready for what the Lord is ready for. The kind of thinking that has held me bound up until now, the kind of mindsets that have breaked negative cycles and negative patterns in my life, the kind of ideologies that cannot produce the kingdom in my life, the type of habits that cannot deliver kingdom value. In the name of Jesus, I am set free from them. As I listen today, I receive answers. I receive insights. I receive wisdom. I receive instructions. I receive understanding. I receive encouragement and I am equipped to live out God's will and be a blessing to my generation. Amen and amen. And so I think it's at this point we're going to welcome uh, our speaker. Um, 
Welcome, sir. Welcome. So good to have, I can't really hear you, sir. I can't hear you. No, sir. You're just making some sounds. We can't hear you yet. Okay. Okay, so why we just give him a minute to get things ready. Welcome everyone. So um, today we're looking at a very, very interesting topic, which is, who can guess the topic? <laughs> who can guess the topic? Just drop it in the comment section. Um, the topic we're looking into today. <laughs> that's not his real voice. Definitely that's not his real voice. Okay, and so we're looking at the topic, the financially responsible male. Yeah, someone says money matters. Yeah, you can say that. <laughs> you can say that the financially responsible male, and it's, it's a topic that I feel that um, everyone needs to be part of. Amazing. And so... Not yet, no, sir. That's strange, right? Maybe you can try logging out and logging back in to know if it's different. Okay, just lost him for a minute. And so, financially responsible male. Mm. And so, by trusting the Lord to speak um, through him. If you don't know uh, Minister Ocholi Okuteba, then I really don't know who you know because he's just a very strong voice in the Ministry of Relationships and Marriage. And guess what? That's even the name of his ministry, Relationships and Marriage. If you really want to receive sense, that's just why I say it. If you want to receive sense, um, you can just go to his page on IG or his YouTube um, channel, relationship and marriage and he shares a lot of wisdom inside like that will change and transform your life and so we're trusting that you'll be able to sort out the issues and be able to come on board and um we'll get to glean a whole lot and so hopefully tonight um in this topic we're hoping to know what it means financial responsibility what's what what's actually involved um let's see Are we good? Yeah, better. Great. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. I, I I found what the trouble was. Um, oh. I will not bother taking off my headphones, which I already have on. Um, so I have an external camera. Um, the setting automatically picked the speaker of the camera as the oh. speaker. Yeah, or was, was the earpiece. So. Um, and that speaker is a distance from me, the, the camera, so uh, that's what happened. Okay, great. Hey. Welcome, sir. So good. Okay, so good I didn't intend to stop you. No, you can go on. Thank you can you. go on. All right, thank you. Um, I had to just sit in the garden um, to do this. It's, um, it's um, well, you know what my circumstance has been. <laughs> Sure. So, and I'm not, I'm not home. I think it's a, it's a better place for me to sit today and have this conversation. All right. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I'm glad that um, I'm able to join you to do this. Quite interesting and um, an interesting subject to come into also. Uh, let's say what a prayer. I know we prayed before we started. Let's say what a prayer and get, get into what I'm here to share with you. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the privilege of your presence and to have this time with these people. I ask that you anoint me to teach truth in simple and clear language 
like Jesus would have done where he physically present. I ask that you anoint them to understand better than I teach and to receive revelation deeper than the explanations I bring. That at the end of the day, our lives will bring forth fruit to the praise of your glory. Amen. All right, so um, the conversation we have today, in my view, um, is a very important one. It's not, um, it's not something we can gloss over. So I'll say a few things just to lay a foundation uh, of this conversation that will take it on. All right. <clears throat> um, number one is we live in a money-driven world. All right. The world is money-driven, not in a sinful sense, in the right sense. All right. Um, to be in this conference right now, you need money. Uh, let me give you a highlight of the kind of money you need to be here right, right now. All right. Number one, you had to eat. All right. To be alive. It took money. Even if you didn't purchase the food yourself, somebody paid for it. Okay. Number two, you needed to be clothed to be here. All right. That's money. Number three, you needed a device to be here. All right. You didn't just need a device to be here. You also needed data to be here. All right. So all of what I have said appears so basic, but they are financial. All right. So uh, when it comes to that conversation, people, people look at big things when they want to talk about money without necessarily looking at the basic things. So the first thing a man must do or a, the male must do, you say the financially responsible male um, is to look at the basic, all right? Not necessarily, you know, uh, the complex things. Money, 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 basically money, all right? Now, the next thing you look at is you look at cultural expectation. And none of us can exactly escape cultural expectation. If anybody tells you they can escape cultural expectation, that's a lie. More than 90% of your pressures in life come from cultural expectation. Why did you come under pressure, whether you are married or not married, after you finish your NYSC? Because there is an expectation thrown at you. All right? Why do you, why do you finish school and the next thing you start feeling depressed if you don't have a job because there's an expectation or your level of financial stability or you meet your friends. You know, um, I always say this jokingly. Um, one of the things that is hard for people to do is to attend um, like class reunion, especially for men when they are not at certain levels in life. Attending their class reunion can be tough. Why can it be tough? It can be tough because they weigh themselves. You know, they look at it. How, what, what, what car am I going to drive there? How am I going to be clothed when I go there? So that's one of the trouble that uh, men have, getting down to forums that make them meet to people. There's a cultural expectation. There's a natural expectation. There's a general expectation, you know, uh, that makes it difficult, you know, sometimes if you're not yet um, as you know, uh, financially stable like other people. So we live in the money wrong world. That's the first thing I must say. Now, let me also say this, that almost all the pressures of the man male are financial. Even the ones that are maxed with other things, almost all the pressure in life of the male man. That's why for most people seated here right now in this conference, if I sent you 10 million naira now, 10 million, you would just start behaving like you have no other trouble in the world. Not that you no longer have trouble, but because most of your troubles are, <laughs> all right? Uh, somebody said, seems there's a voice pattern that is converting his true voice. Well, um, Cynthia, um, is that something you can confirm? I can hear you. I can hear you. Well, hello, Cynthia. I can hear you, sir. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, sir? Okay. Okay, and, and I'm very clear to you, yeah? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So perhaps the person is having um, an issue on their end. All right, let me not, let me, let, let me uh, focus then. All right, so it becomes, um, it becomes very important to re 
realize that at that point, all right, um, you need to see that these pressures eh, uh, require wisdom. The Bible says in Proverbs 4, 7, that wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. All right, so it says you should get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. So just like I said, 10 million. Ah, some people are already reacting. 10 M. Do you get what I mean? 10 million. I said, me, you know, even as I said, I just realized that million is spent, spelled M-I-L-L-I-O-N. All right? Million. Some people are already imagining. All right? But here's the deal. Here's the deal. The primary problem of the man male when it comes to money, all right, is often not what the man male thinks about. All right? The primary problem of the male man is often not what he's occupied with. They have a bigger trouble than what they're occupied with most of the time. And I'm going to identify it. I mean, some of the things I will say tonight will shock some people. And I'm going to get very practical. Like, I love it when I speak to men. So we're going to get very, very practical. All right? Number one. Hey! Are the men ready? Number one. Most men take responsibility for what is not their responsibility. And that's a problem. <laughs> okay. Hey, most men are competing. Most men are competing with God. And I'm going to show you what your responsibility is not. Because the reason hmm. why men are dying cheap for money problem is because they are entering problem that God did not send them to enter. Let me say this to you. If money can determine your joy, you have lost it. Did you hear what I said? If money, money, money can determine your joy, you already lost it. So let me show you this. Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6, from verse 19. I'll skip a few verses just for context. It says, lay not up treasure for yourself upon the earth, where moth and rot doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. If you have a Bible, this portion of the Bible is written in red. Jesus himself was the one speaking. And what was he showing here? Jesus was showing a very simple concept. And that concept is, whatever you make here can be destroyed here. Whatever you make here can be stolen here. I'm sitting here in London, and I feel for a lot of people, not just in London, but in Europe and other parts of the world right now, where fire Fire is just raising down property, millions, people's worth, people's life earnings, people's struggle, just waste it in a day. If the biggest thing you have is money, you are really poor. Hmm. Economy is crash. Recessions happen. If the biggest thing you have is money, you are poor. Very, very poor. All right? Because, see, I'll soon get to a scripture that describes money for what money is. So when we're talking about financial responsibility, you must begin by even knowing what is not your responsibility. All right? So Jesus said, lay not up treasures for yourself. All right? Now, if you jump to verse 20, it says for 21, it says for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. In essence, I would have money, but money should never have my heart. And I'm going to show you how. That's the bane of my conversation today. Because if you don't understand this aspect, you would actually come to the point where you cannot live your life. You know all that Satan will do to you? Satan will keep tampering with your money so that he can tamper with your life because he knows that money has become your life. Simple. Do you get what I mean? So it's so important to understand this foundational concept. So he said, where the man's treasure he there is, a heart is also. This is why some people have money and can't do anything but try to just have money. All right, but Verse 20, 22, the light of the body is the eye, the eye be single. No, verse 23, all right, verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other. This is still in the context of money. Or despise the other. He said, You cannot serve God and mammon. What is mammon? Take note of this if you're writing. Mammon is anything you will do for money, even if it offends God. That's the worship of mammon. The worship of mammon is simple. Anything for money, notwithstanding what God feels. This is why men go into cultism. This is why men go into vices. Why? Their confidence is not in what I'm about to explain to you. 
their confidence is in money. This is why some men are bad, bad husbands. But money dictates their mood and what their wife will receive of them. So their wife cannot have a good husband anytime they don't have money. That's an unstable man. He's never stable because his stability is dependent on money. Mm. That's a problem. All right? So he, he can't, he, don't even talk about financial responsibility with him. He's actually going to be an unstable person because his mood. <laughs> All right, now listen, watch this. Verse 25. This is the core of what I'm going to say. Therefore, I say to you, take no thought for your life. Number one, number one, say take no thought for your life. I'm not responsible for my life. I'm telling you. For instance, I've been flying. I'm going to fly in the next couple of days to get back to base. Money cannot buy me a safe trip home. That's what Jesus began to say. Money can buy me a ticket on a plane, but not safe trip. It doesn't matter what you pay. When a plane drops, for instance, and people die, people die in the first class cabin, economic cabin, business class cabin, in the cockpit. They all die. Normal it. Why? At that point, all right, what you paid to enter the plane does not count. So Jesus says, first of all, take no thought for your life. I'm going to show you some things that are not your responsibility. Ah, hmm. when, I teach, when I teach these things, sometimes people just wonder like, hey, you want to make people irresponsible? No, I have lived like this and it's not irresponsible. He said, therefore, I say to you, take no thought for your life. What you will eat. <laughs> hey, somebody start doubting me now, but may God help your heart. It's not like my children at home. They don't have to think of how food stuff will be in the store. See, let me say this so that I don't keep you in suspense before I read and explain. There are two categories of finances that a man has to deal with. Category number one are the necessaries sponsored by God. The, mm. necess the necessaries sponsored by God. Category number two, the wealth which the man may should multiply for the sake of purpose. My basic is God's responsibility. My prosperity, my prosperity is my responsibility. That's wow. why let me jump let me jump ahead of myself. The master who gave his servants talents did not require them to find talent. He gave them talents. When he came back, he wanted profit. Just in case you are a man here and you have been pressing all your uncles for capital they are not giving you, you are pressing the wrong person. Put pressure on God. God supplies the capital. Even when he uses people, he uses them as conduits, as channels. True, true. You know what I'm saying? True. So, so what do I do? You see the store in my house is God's store. I'm just the one who eats from it as his child. So I tell him to fill up his store in my house because the store happens to be in my house but it is his store. He said I should take no thought what I eat. This is why men are dying. There are things I can't worry about again. Sustenance, I ask him for it. He said take no, this is Jesus talking you know, not Ocholio Kutepa. He said don't think about it. Not that you shouldn't plan but don't worry. That's what he's saying. He said, it's not your portion to be agitated about what you will eat. See, let me tell you, a lot of men betray the fatherhood of God. You know what they do? They look to God like he's irresponsible. That's why you're fighting your wife if you're married. That's why you're you are losing your emotion because you have not gotten job for two months, for one year, in fact, for three years. Because what Satan is doing to you is that he's using your sense to make you forget who your source is. You have a source. You have a source. Who is your source? You know, like that famous preaching that went around at the point, who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? See, my child would be insulting me if I called home now and asked my wife, how is David? And my 10-year-old comes to the phone. I said, daddy, I'm really worried. And I said, David, what are you worried about? What we will eat? It's a proof. That would be a proof of my failure. In essence, I have been unable to keep food in the house. So my 10-year-old is suddenly bothered about what to eat. Are you care what I'm saying? So a lot of men act like they are God. See, 
you are strong, but you are not the Almighty. You are not mm. El Shaddai. And any time yes, you sir. want to, any time you you want to form El Shaddai, like Tamadeh, me say you shall die. You have the capacity to be El Shaddai. So if you try to be El Shaddai, you shall die. I'm telling you, I cannot be El Shaddai. All right. I tell people, it is based on what I'm telling you that personally as a person, I've seen uncommon favor uncommon favors in life. I mean, favors that are mind-boggling. Fav I mean, see, sometimes people look at you and they wonder, like, how much do you have? Uh-uh. 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 I have more favor right now than I have. But the favor keeps producing money. Did you did just get what I said. I have more favor right now than money. <laughs> but guess what? The favor keeps producing the money. So to be financially responsible, you need to first of all know who your source is and what is his portion to provide. See, men are dying of too much heartache, heart attack. All the, why? They don't even know who their source is. You think your job is your source? Then you are, you are really poor. poor. You are poor. <laughs> I'm telling you, your job will stress you in life. You think you're, no matter what you earn. See, I'll give you an example. Have you met people who earn a lot until they fall sick? And their job requires them physically for them to make money. <laughs> that kind of person is in trouble. They make a lot of money, but their job requires them. All right? Their job requires them. Do you get what I mean? So Jesus said, Therefore I say unto you, take note for your life, number one, what ye shall eat, number two, what ye shall drink, number three, or for your body, number four, that's what you put on it. He said, is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment? He said, behold the fowls of the air for they, ne they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into bands, yet your heavenly father. See, this was a very smart move by Jesus. The move is extremely smart. The first thing he did was to say, you know what? Look at your heavenly father. He feeds the bed of the air, beds of the air and all of that. He didn't call him dear father. So your father is so responsible. He feeds the beds of the air, your own father. And let me tell you, God is not your African father who is nice outside, but mean at home. He's not. I know some of you have experienced that, but that's not who God is. All right? He's not kind outside and mean at home. His nature is consistent. So he says, your father feeds the best beds of the air. He didn't say, dear father. He said, your father, your papa, your papa, your own, your own papa. That's why I don't even know why Nigerians are angry when you say your papa. When you say my papa, I say his name is God. It's not insult now. He said, your papa is God. Thank you for telling me my papa. I will direct you to where he is. All right? So it's so, it's so, it's so important, all right? It's so important to know that God is saying here, that before you start talking about being financially responsible, it is good for you to know that I am first of all financially responsible to you. Hmm. <laughs> I, let, let me give you, um, let me say the much I can say about this and say it uh, honestly. So we had um, a vacation to Dubai with the family. Um, August 1 to eight and the family headed back to Nigeria while I headed to London for our hangout which held yesterday the weeks leading up to the vacation of course I was spending but by the time we are done with all of these travels school fees will be ready for us right guess what happened God brought certain things my way that ensured that school fees was completely in our joint account for September before we flew for vacation in August mm. It wasn't a planned thing. It wasn't in the plan. But based on what I'm telling you, our faith was released in God that taking a vacation that will cost us money, which will make us look reckless to human other people, like you have XYZ waiting for you in September, in this month, in that month, you want to do this. For God's sake, the family needed vacation. So based on our faith, like I was teaching somewhere a couple of months ago and I told them, when the store is going low in my house, our prayer is simple. Dear Lord, your store in our house is empty. 
when the school fees time is coming. Because listen to the principle I shared to you based on Matthew 6, is that God is responsible for my necessaries. I am responsible for my prosperity. Mm -hmm. Now, the necessaries will, pro will produce the seed in my hand to prosper with. But for my basic, I'm not responsible for it. So, when school fees is coming, I will simply say, the school fees, your school fees that is due in my house is due. All right? Do you get what I mean? I mean, all right? Do we need pieces of clothing? All right? Do we need to change dresses? Do we need to pay rent? The rent you owe in my house where I live is due. <laughs> Somebody just be wondering, this guy is crazy. Yes. And that's how Jesus wants us to be crazy. He said, why are you worrying? <laughs> your rent, nobody's listening to me. Your rent is expiring on 16th of September. <laughs> you have not been sleeping. 16th September. <laughs> if I enter here, they watch 16. <laughs> if I, you don't want August to end. <laughs> you don't know who is responsible for the rent. That's the problem. That's the only problem. You need to know who is responsible for this rent. It's not you. You just happen to be living there. My father owns the land. Jesus owns the land. No room for the devil here. My father owns this land. In my father's house, there are many mansions there. In my father's house, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. A cattle on a thousand hills. There he is. Has somebody just wondering? I thought this guy just come, come and show us 52 ways to be financially stable. This is the beginning. This is the beginning. I'm telling you. This is the beginning. If you don't get this, you've gotten nothing. So I'll give you another example. I've talked about this publicly. You know what? I need to put on a particular light here. So it's getting dark here. Okay. okay sir. So one second. Okay, sir. Wow. This has been mind-boggling <laughs> i am not responsible for the basics wow this reminds me of um um some 23 verse 1 the lord is my shepherd i shall not want and a particular translation says the lord is my shepherd i have no need or have no want for anything Okay. okay go on, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. All right. So it's so important. I, I'll give you a story. I shared the story in public, so I'm just going to repeat. It's a personal story. Uh, so sometime in 2015, we we're in the US, and um, um, while I was preparing to go pick my family, my uh, son was playing, and um, he played rough. Like he got some stuff into his throat, and they had to call 911. Um, at the point, they lifted him. In under 24 hours, he was back home like nothing happened. Like, they didn't even have to cut him open to solve the problem. But at the end of the day, there was a $32,000 bill for the whole process. I mean, that was crazy, $32,000. And, you know, um, I didn't even know something that was happening until my wife mentioned to me sometime later. Uh, I was back in Nigeria. I ended up traveling there, got them back home. Um Time will fail me to go into how much favor favor went into clearing that bill. Uh, some miracle discounts here and there. I mean, somebody in one of the facilities that we owed the biggest bill took it upon herself to pursue charity. I never met this lady who only spoke on phone. She was supposed to be like the, the manager for that recovery of the funds. I mean, this lady went out of her way, pursued some charity to give discount to us. On one occasion, we got discount of about $4,500, one, one strike. I mean, it was all manner of miracles, but that's not my point here. All right? Uh, but, here's, but, but here's the deal. Um, when we're fully back in Nigeria, a couple of months after, my wife said to me, and I was shocked to hear that because I didn't know all of that was going on. So she just said to me one of those days, thank you so much, you're a very good man. So I'm like, I was thinking about, like, what are you talking about? She's like, number one, when the incident happened and she called, the first thing she thought would happen um, was I was going to be mad at her. I'm like, mad at you for what? I could be there and this boy could still do this if God 
I mean, we, we should thank God that he was saved, you know. And she talked about the bill and um, how, with all of the pressure, we were rather bonding than uh, me becoming a disgruntled man or angry man or, you know, reacting to everything and all. And I just smiled, like, how? I should kill myself. No, I cannot. I have a life to live. See, when we enter problem, the Bible says many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord God, the Lord God delivers him from them all. Many. I don't know why you're treating your financial affliction as one of the affliction that God is not covering. He said, but the Lord God will deliver him from them or not some. See, I know where I started here. Sorry, uh, Cynthia, in case you wanted me to do what they call people call the practical part of money. This is the foundation on which every practical can stand. Because let me tell you, just like the story I just gave you, I don't know where your own $32,000 problem can come from. If you are not stable. See, Satan's strategy is very simple. He will throw every and anything at you so that all the principles you know can fly off the window. All the mm. financial principles you know will disappear when you're in trouble until you understand the foundation. Guess what? Let me be what's in the case. If you know anything about 2015, the transition between Jonathan and Buhari, you will know what the dollar did also in 2015 through 2017. This bill happened under Jonathan. This bill was required to be paid under Buhari. The dollar to Naira then was around 190 something. I still remember. That bill was still pending. We're paying based on some payment plan. I mean, at the point it became tiring. That's when I realized, oh boy, you're not God. Let God do miracles here. That bill came on that dollar to Naira at 300 and something. So the 32,000 was in effect 64,000 because Forex tumbled on the Naira, on the bill. And I primarily live in Nigeria. I need to pay in dollars. I primarily earn in Naira. I need to pay a dollar bill. So the exchange rate factored in my bill. Do you understand what I'm saying? But here's the deal. The foundation upon which you stand is what can determine the workings of the principle of money. I will not read further, but help yourself. Read through Matthew um, 6. It would help you. Let me read one more scripture then say a few things in the sense of human practical wisdom. All right, First Timothy chapter 6. You are good, you are kind. I have never seen your kind. I'm devoted to your praise and forever to your name. All right, can you see this? Um, First Timothy chapter 6. Look at the scripture, very powerful money. Verse 17. Charge them that are rich in the world that they be high-minded not to trust in uncertain riches. This is what I've been saying. That my money doesn't determine my mood. And my mm. confidence in life is not based on my money. This is what will keep us humble even when we are so, so rich. This is what will keep us on purpose. Aha, let me go into the one that touches men. This is what will keep you to your wife, even when your financial fortunes go high. Because for some guys right now, they are keeping to one woman just because they can't afford more than one. Hmm? <laughs> this is what will keep you, this is what will keep you sane when you can afford your spec. You know, there are certain ladies, they are your spec, but you can't even greet them because your condition is bad. You can't give anybody lift. You know, they, you can't even give lift. You are trekking. How can you give somebody lift? Is it joint trekking? Mm -mm. Or you are driving a car that you're not very proud of. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the Bible says. Very clear. He said, charge them that are rich in this world. That they be not high-minded. He said, not to trust in uncertain riches. But, uh, now watch this. But in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. God wants us to enjoy you. He said he gives us all things to enjoy 
But let him not give you stuff that takes you away from him. That's what a man must know. Every man must know. See, let me tell you this. Every man that becomes a man of what must deal with the temptation to be taken over by their worth. That's why you see a lot of men humble until they have money. You see a lot of men caring until they have money. You see a lot of men love Jesus until they have money. Like Jesus is a poor God. No, he's not poor. He didn't give you money so that you can abandon him. So the financially responsible man begins from that man who understands that his source is God and money cannot determine his relationship with God. That's why Paul says very boldly, I have learned how to abound and to abase. In essence, I am consistent no matter my worth. If you see my character when I have 10 million, it will be the same as my character when I have 10,000. If you see my character when I have 1 billion, it will be the same as my character when I have 1 naira. Right? What are you saying? You are saying that my character consistency is not determined by my bank balance. Until you come to that point, you are not stable enough to fulfill your God-ordained destiny. Finances will determine your emotion and control your narrative. All right? Now watch this. Now watch this. Verse 18, still on 1 Timothy 6, verse 18, he said that they do good, that they be rich in good works. They be rich in good works. Why did he say be rich in good works? Remember, Jesus said, some people come to him and say, I mean, we served you. And he said to me, to them, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. The word there is the workers. All right? Workers. What do you work? All right? He said that they do good and that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Are you saying, are you saying that? That's so powerful. To be ready to distribute. Why? God has us as financial stewards to serve him with money. You know, it's so funny. You see some people, when you look for what they have done on earth that's even relevant to anybody on earth, you can't find. Where have See, you're a financial steward, not a financial reservoir. So people are just trying to amass wealth. Why are you trying to just amass wealth? So that you can be proud. So that I can go to a village meeting and oppress everybody in the village. No. That's not the purpose. That's not the purpose. Don't forget the verse before this talks about giving us all things richly to enjoy. God already wants us to enjoy. So I'm not preaching poverty here. God wants us to have the good things of life. So I'm not saying you, you don't do anything for yourself. You just go to charity. You just go to this. But the foundation must be that God is your source. God is the one that, you know, gives you the confidence you have in life. God is your supply, all right? God is the one who blesses the works of your hands. Your necessaries are his responsibility. Your prosperity is how you now put your hands to work. Verse 19, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Did you get that? All right? Now, having said that, I'll say a few things by way of principle. What do you do knowing that God supplies, um, um, you know, knowing that God already supplies for you, what you do is that you begin to steward the finances that God brings. This is where a lot of Christians miss it. Steward the finances that God brings. Let me give you a few principles. All right. Proverbs 21 verse 20. Principle number one. Saving, saving, save, save, save. You see, you cannot prosper or manage finances well if you don't learn to save. In fact, let me quickly say this. Money is not safe until it's safely away from you. The 21st century is a very dangerous time when it comes to money. The banking system makes money too accessible to you. So as I'm speaking to you right now, you can pull out your phone and all your money can be assessed by you. You just sign into your banking app. You just swipe it. You just plug it. In fact, let me say this. And with every sense of responsibility, if you have an ATM card for all your accounts, you are not wise. 
because 21st century banking make your money too easy to access. So there's, you don't have money anywhere that you, you are forced to enter the bank physically and sign a fiscal paper. Ah, you can go broke in a second. In one second. Do you get what I mean? So now look at scripture. Let it not be like I came here to insult anybody's son. Proverbs 21 verse 20. The wise store up choice food and olive oil, but fools gulp their down. Let me read the NLT. The wise have wealth and luxury, but fools spend whatever they get. I didn't call you a fool. Though. If you always spend all you have, no matter how little you earn, the Bible says you are a fool. Because the principle of saving is not about the quantity you get, but practicing the principle. It's a principle. For mm. instance, if you decide going forward for everything I get, I'll keep aside 10%. 10% is 10%. Whether it's of 1 million, 20 million, 30 million. See, let me say this to you. When COVID hit, the first place a lot of people had to go to find their first level of survival was their savings. The people who were hit, hit the most are those who had no savings to call on. And I'm going to show you a scripture that backs this up and we set up for the next principle. Look at Ecclesiastes 11, verse 2. Just jump to Ecclesiastes 11, 2. I'll show you in different translations and show you what I'm saying. I mean, it's so amazing. Uh, <laughs> and, and people need to note this. Too many men have money too accessible to them. As I'm talking to you, some of you listen to me this now, you need to break one of your cards. You are carrying five ATM cards about with three three thousand dollar balance, and if you are rich, you are broke, you are poor, <laughs> very poor, and your poverty will be confirmed by your capacity to use it all. Let me tell you: until you begin to keep money away from you, you will not know how reckless you are. Do you get what I mean? Let me give you an example. There was a time I set a particular standing order on my account daily daily. Let me tell you where I started. Just for context, I'll mention the amount. I figured that I spend a lot, for instance, on recharge cards because I take and make a lot of calls. So I figured that what I spend daily is, ma is mad. Like, guy, you're spending money without knowing. At the end of the month, you don't imagine what you're spent. So the first time I tried this principle, jokingly, I set a standing order of 1000 daily, every day. You may feel you can't. The moment I start doing it, you just realize there are calls you have been sitting on for one hour that you didn't need to make for one hour. You could send text. You could send WhatsApp. There are things you buy that are purely to feed your greed that are not necessary in life. Until you begin to save, you will not notice that. Do you get what I mean? So I just said the standing order. That's how in 100 days, I saw 100K, like joke. Like 100,000, where have you been? I've been looking for you. I didn't feel it, but I ended up seeing a 100K. Huh? 100,000 there. Oh, I can just casually gather you like this. Like just casually. Because I wasn't feeling the impact of the 1K daily. Because it's 1K, 1K, 1K. For me, 1K. No, it's 1K. 1,000. Do you get what I mean? The other thing it did to me is it made me conscious not to let that account go below a certain amount. So that so it disciplined me. Ah, uh, some of you listen to me have Father Christmas of the universe. Well done. Keep dashing. It's good to do good, but not the one that you yourself will soon come to the point where you cannot do good. See, we, we take some of this principle not because we want to be mean, but because we want to prosper at the level where we can help people more. Yeah. So I'm not saying I stop I stop helping people, but you see, if you want to, if you want to end your life before you start it, then you actually not be useful in life. Hmm? And it is based on this principle also. I learned to say no to people who are stuck lazy. You know, some people will beg you money year in year out, year in year. When will you pick a life? You have been asking me money for five years. Somebody sent a message to our ministry line asking for money, you know. In fact, let me give you the funny story. 
since we were coming to UK to do a program and we had a UK contact, this person went to send for financial assistance to the UK people. So when they drew my attention, to, I'm like, don't respond to this nonsense. It looked like I was mean until I told them why I said so. I went to my inbox and showed them messages, five years worth of 2018 till nine is how many, till now is how many years? Four years worth of series of messages from this person. And I told them I've given this person money before, more than once. So he stopped talking to me now since he has exhausted me personally as an option. And he saw that we have a UK contact line for our ministry. And he's chiling through there. I said, this is the height of irresponsibility. I mean, I cannot fund your irresponsibility. Because sometimes when we do that, we're we are actually offending God. There are people God wants to train through their suffering. Why is he training them through their suffering? They have been reckless. God has been trying to correct them. But you are now funding somebody that God is trying to give sense. I refuse to fund such a person. I told them that, in fact, this is wickedness. Because this person still has access to me. But he has now picked a UK line to put pressure. Do you get what I mean? Let me show you something to back up the point I made. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 2. Why do you, why do you save? The next layer is invest. All right? Uh, which supports the other point, And I'll show you where it supports it. Invest in seven ventures. Yes, in eight. You do not know what disaster may come upon the land. That's the NIV. Do you, does this sound like COVID to you? He did not say what disaster will come upon you. He said, invest in seven. No, in eight. You don't know what disaster will come on the land. Do you realize that some people were not hit by COVID because they had the investment that did not require their fiscal presence? Do you realize that some businesses prospered more with the, short, with the lockdown because they were relevant to a lockdown? So I said to men, your target should be at least, based on this scripture, eight streams of income. Eight. If you have not hit eight, you are still on the journey. <laughs> eight. If you have not yet touched eight, you have not yet arrived. You are still on the journey. Invest in seven ventures. Yes, in eight. You do not know what disaster will come upon the land. You know what the, a lot of people are doing? They are eating all the investments. The Bible says it gives seed to the sower, bread to the eater. Why are you converting everything God sends to you as food? Why are you not identifying the one that is seed? Don't forget in Genesis 8.22, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. You don't have harvest because you are not sowing any seed. And please, I'm a man of God, but I'm not talking about seed in church. That's not the one I'm talking about today. It has place. Because you people Christians in this generation, the moment they mention seed, they are thinking of offering basket. I'm talking about I'm talking about investment. I'm talking about business. I'm talking about, I mean, plug money somewhere that it works. Plug money somewhere that it works. I'll give you an example. I didn't start writing books because I wanted to earn money. But sitting down, sleeping, waking, what I see from book sale online still amazes me. I used to think people don't even read ebooks. Hello. I have written the book finish. I am now sleeping and I am seeing the money. Hello. Do you understand what I'm saying? Invest in. See, hey, God, let me be honest with you. If you don't invest in this life, you will beg. Because an average person, especially in my dear country, Nigeria, lives above their formal means. Let me use my Abuja for example. <laughs> An average person in Abuja is not living on what they earn directly from their former source of income. It's very government workers. All of them will be living in Bacha if it is based on former source of income. So you must... Now, how do you expand investment opportunity? Number one, pray. Pray. Let God guide your heart. Pray. I mean, pray for real. Ask the Lord to guide your heart, to make you discerning, to see opportunity. Some people don't know how to see opportunity. Opportunity just be passing fear and fear. The only one they'll go and enter is MMM. Don't enter MMM. Don't enter any Ponzi scheme. Mm -mm. In fact, let me show you why you should not enter Ponzi scheme. Um, let me show you this scripture. I need to find it. Um, do you know Ponzi scheme is in the Bible? 
MMM is in the Bible. Let me show you. Uh -huh. So, because the money we will make under God will not be money that is out of greed or pursuit of inordinate wealth. It will be built by strategic investment savings. <laughs> Proverbs 13, 11. Some of you may not have, never have seen this scripture, but let me show you. Wealth gotten from get-rich-quick schemes quickly disappears. Wealth from hard work grows over time. Hmm. There's a Nigerian we all know. His name is Hush Puppy. He used to flaunt wealth everywhere. But right now, I think he's sleeping on Six Springs bed in his cell in the United States of America. I'm not preaching greed. I'm preaching wealth that is built. Wealth. It takes process. It takes time. I'll show you one more scripture. One more scripture that supports the foundation I laid earlier. That scripture would help us wrap this up, especially when it comes to building wealth gradually. See, the reason why you are not practicing certain principles you know is because you want to get rich quick. So if I say write a book, the next thing you ask me is, how soon do I get one million? Now, you don't write a book for making money. So if I say, what's your passion in life? Or I meet somebody, there are books in you, write them. The person is thinking, thinking of buying a car. What is car? What is house? See, when you build, you come to the point where you have the things you seek without seeking them. Do you get what I mean? But let me show you the foundation. Hebrews 13 verse 5, I'll close with this scripture and answer questions. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with such things as you have. So the first thing you must attain is contentment on the journey. So as I begin to invest, as I begin to save, as I begin to be financially prudent, as I ask the Lord to guide my heart in investment, if I have one shoe, I comfortably enjoy my one shoe. If I live in a rented apartment, I trust God, like I said, I pay my rent and I keep moving. See, contentment is the foundation on which you build wealth. If you are not content, you're in trouble. All right? He said, now, listen to this. I want to close where I started. <laughs> say, be content with such things as you have. What is the basis of our contentment? Money in the bank? No. Plans that we have? No. He said, God has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So my contentment is based on the one who is forever with me. So I know that if I'm paying rent right now, because he's with me, I will soon be receiving rent. I know that if I don't have a car right now, because he's with me, I will have cars. I know. Do you get what I mean? So now, that level of stability of heart is what makes me look at investment opportunity and can weigh them. See, people invest wrongly because they invest through fear. You know, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. Will I blow? Will I make it? Will I this? That's why they steal people's money. Do you know how many Ponzi schemes have happened in the world? People keep putting money. Another one will come in another brand. They will put money again. Why? They are not investing from a place where they are content with where God has them currently, content enough to listen for his voice and to deploy their investment only when they have certainty from the Lord. I hope with these few points of mine, we can stop here and answer questions. Amazing. Wow. Oh, wow, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. That was, this This was a mind-blowing session. Thank you so much, sir. Thank God, thank God. Thank you so much, sir. Thank God. We're open to questions, so please, if you have any question, please drop it in the comment section so we can answer it. One of the points that stood out for me is when he said, if the biggest thing a man has is money, he is very poor. Wow. In a society that measures a man's worth by money, that's a very profound statement. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. So please, if you have practical questions um, related to this topic, please feel free to ask. 
But while we are waiting for them, sir, let me just ask these few questions. The first one would be, um, <laughs> speaking of being financially responsible, yes. okay? How respond in, in the context of a dating courtship relationship, how responsible is a man towards his intending? Um, can you throw more light on how money works in a courtship relationship? Okay. Is the woman <laughs> the responsible for responsibility of the man, girlfriend allowance and all those things? So let me hear your thoughts on that, sir. Okay. Yeah. Um, very, very, very important question if you ask me. Um, it's so it's so important to note that um, scriptures apply very well and very easy uh, when it comes to these things. Um, the Bible says, "Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen." Right? Um, courtship is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of marriage not yet seen. That's the simple mm. principle. So yeah. while I am not responsible for for you yet, in the full sense, I should demonstrate. So it's not an obligation, but it's a revelation. Why do I say it's not an obligation, but a revelation? Why yeah. you are not responsible for me, what you do will reveal to me what you can do when you are not forced. So nobody is forcing you, but what are you choosing to do? It reveals to me what you are capable of when nothing is forcing you. So the lady should watch. The guy should watch. Because if the lady begins to place demand on him, place demand on him, that's another brand of problem. Because she doesn't actually know the rules. If the man begins to act like, until I marry you, until I marry you. Now revelation, now they happen. People are just revealing their, their identity. All right? <laughs> I love that. I love that. I'm seeing a question here. Someone is asking yes. if you throw more light on the whole joint account thing. You mentioned having a joint account with your wife. How does it work? Yes. I think that should be in marriage. Yeah, how does it work in marriage? Okay, um, good question. Um, I wish I can just say just in marriage. For us, we actually believed in it so much that we started before marriage. <laughs> Wow. And I'll explain, please. I'm not teaching it as a principle. Don't try this at home. Uh, but it was part of how we got our um, our foundation in that area. Um, we were somewhere students dating. And somebody talked about finances and talked about joint account. We were so convinced. We went to the bank on Monday. I don't know why they believed us because we we're not married. We didn't have a business. And we opened a joint account. <laughs> so it's after we got married, we opened the one in our joint name now. Um, none of the things I'll say is, um, is a command or a doctrine. It's a suggestion that can help and aid. I do not believe any couple are properly married if they are not financially married. Don't forget, hmm. where, this Don't forget where this conversation started. We live in a money wrong world. How can I be married to you in a money wrong world and not be married to you financially? That means our union is weak because the principal element of earthly interaction does not bind us. <laughs> Are we married? Are your roommates, flatmates? Do you understand? Can we? So where does it begin? It begins from financial openness to each other. Like as I'm sitting here, there are pressure my wife can put on me. If I say, oh, baby, we are traveling next week. She can't tell me to buy business class or first class ticket. She knows what, what we have right now. Do you understand? So my pressure is even lessened because she knows. <laughs> my pressure is lessened, you know. But here's the deal. In line with the principle of sharing that money is not safe until safely away from you, I tell couples that the first reason they need to consider a joint account is we call it, for instance, in my own home, our strong room. That's our strong room. Two to sign. So that even if my head is touching, her head will not be touching. It takes two. We, we, we jokingly say that it takes board meeting 
to assess any fund there. Because part of why this helps is you are likely to be married to a person who does not have the same money personality type as you. And they are hoarders, they are spenders, they are risk takers. I mean, we have different money personality type. Like me, me, me before, I've changed. Distributor general. Distributor. As in, I have borrowed money to borrow somebody before who will not pay me. So in essence, I was borrowing to borrow the person and I know I'll pay the, the debt, me. Or I can have a lot of money in my hand and across 10 kilometers before I get home, <laughs> I'll just distribute it. Do you get what I mean? So, and there are people, they are planners. So what happens is a joint account can help you merge your strengths before you damage your finances as a family. Do you get what I mean? So uh, now different ways people can practice this. I'll just give a clear example. You still live in separate bodies. You may still be earning through different sources. So I'm not saying you must just put the money, you must just bring all your money, pour it inside the account and say, what do we do? No. Marriage runs on agreement. It runs on understanding. So, for instance, the same way a believer will say, look, I kite every money that comes to me. We can simply just say, look, every money that comes to our hands, yeah, can we deduct so and so no matter what else we are doing yes okay we're running the family this way we're paying our bills this way we're meeting these responsibilities this way do we agree that xyz amount goes here xyz percentage goes here as a matter of principle what is it for you can now define the purpose of the joint stuff for instance family savings for instance family project for instance we have a project on coming i want to dedicate this account to it I give you an example. School fees. Why does school fees embarrass a lot of people from time to time? School fees is not embarrassing some family because they don't have money or because they didn't plan. Do you get what I mean? So there are certain there are certain ways my wife speaks to me, for instance, that you know you don't have an option. Don't even think of that particular account. Nothing, nobody will take us there. Like I gave an example. When COVID lockdown began, I'm a lawyer and a minister. I... I run my practice, court closed. Clients didn't have need for lawyers as it were, apart from a few transactions that they still could do because businesses were shut down and it took businesses running to be engaged, all right? Of course, online sessions like this began where they'll make you come and uh, teach online and all of that and give you an offering or an honorarium or something, you know? But even that one, ah, See, everything that actively engaged you went low. The first place we went to is what I'm telling you. The first place we need to plan from, okay, why? This is the same principle that Joseph taught them in Egypt. Otherwise, they would have had plenty and ended up in poverty. The fact that you have plenty today, don't mean poverty cannot catch you if you don't plan well. And that's one system families can use to say, you know what, this percentage we can deduct and keep here is how we use our plenty to ensure we never get into poverty. Do you get what I mean? In fact, by the time we arrived at our vacation, Julia and I began to laugh. We're like, if we do not take the step we took to put certain monies aside straight in the joint account, the way we were planning our travel, we would have spent it all and wonder why we are broke. So it's important. Great. Okay, so I, I think what you explained now answered the question one of the I saw now. Someone is asking, is it still important to have individual accounts? So I, 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 I guess from what you're saying, you can still have your individual accounts, just that based on agreement, maybe a percentage or an excess on your salary or an, on a stream of income be turned into a joint account or a project account. So I like to believe you've answered that okay so someone is asking i think i saw two questions on how can men create multiple streams of income so let's say someone has a job or has just a business how can they create multiple streams of income okay i like that question um the problem in the world today is a wisdom problem a lot of people see you cannot prosper above your knowledge mm. so I may not be able to give you the details of the answer here, but I'll give you a guide. Do you know, <laughs> hey, I want to look for trouble, I'll look for it. 
a lot of people are spending time, quality time, watching Big Brother Niger, arguing on social media, and deepening their poverty. I love football, so let me stroke people like me too. Some people, have, some people have argued Messi and Ronaldo for the last 10 years. But they have not had time to attend one seminar on how to make money. They have not had time to go and sit with any business and say, how do I invest in your business? Do you know as we speak, all manner of businesses are shouting, come and invest, come and invest. You know what most people take it for? All of them are scam, are scam. If the world is as much scam as you think, businesses will not be standing as much as they're standing. If businesses are crying left, right, center, you can invest, you can do this. It is important to go and pay attention, to go and open your ear. Because it is when you even listen to some of those things that you can know where to pray, that you can know where to think, that you can know where to reason. Like there are certain things I take to my wife for us to have conversation is because I considered it. Even on our vacation, we attended a business thing inside the vacation. They say, hey, this is, invest this in Dubai. Do this, this, this. Do this, this, this. Is it bad to earn in Forex? Did they cost me? They didn't cost me now. Is it bad to earn foreign currency? It is sweet. My books on Amazon gives me an idea. I mean, do you get what I mean? It gives me an idea of what it means for dollar to enter your account or pounds to enter your account. It is very sweet. So we went and sat down. We spent hours there. Ask some man a question. We left there without plugging into an investment. But my God. They op even the thing that I used to critically assess those people made me know what to answer, what not to answer. So one of the things you must do, seek opportunities. Some will come free, some will come paid. Seek opportunities to listen to different um, patterns of businesses, different structure of investment. Listen, 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 pay attention, study into them. Look at this area, look at that. Let me be honest. Some people watching me right now, it's not empty prophecy I'm giving, I'm telling you truth. So people listen to me right now. You are so diligent observation, study, exposure away from starting something <laughs> that will change your life. Your life will just. For instance, I'll give you an example. I read a gentleman this afternoon on social media and I was so amazed at his, at his honest and very brutal assessment of his situation. He said before Conga, Jumia and the likes were anything. He even tagged the site he had started with a friend that was supposed to be like a retail online thing. He said it was tough for them because the internet was not the in thing at the time. But they made so much inroad. They were making progress. The idea was fantastic. Now he's seen the same kind of idea. Even something, they have something better than what's on ground that others are now profiting from massively. Guess what? Because he did not know how businesses run. Look at what he said. He said today, they are owners of a 100% failed business. And I'll tell you why he used those words. Owner of a 100% failed business. Somebody approached them. All they needed was 20 million. But they are not properly guided. Somebody approached them ready to plug 21, 25 million, but for 51% stake in the company. They refused. He said, looking back now, knowing what he knows about partnerships, and joint investment, joint venture is the single worst decision he has taken in his life. He tagged the site of that business he started. The site is still there. He tagged the site to say this is his 100% owned failed business because he did not have the exposure of partnership. The exposure of partnership. So you see, when some Nigerian businesses scale up to a, a level, and foreign, foreign partners come in to buy them off. People complain. It's a, we want it to be wholly Nigerian-owned. You are selling it because of how many billion, blah, blah, blah. Be there arguing. They are doing it for you so that you say Nigeria fully owns it. You try. Yeah. There are points that that partnership is the next level. So I'm trying to look for a name for myself. I'm the one that owns it 100%. What has all your 100% owning done for you? So seek it actively. See, let me tell you, somebody is listening to me. This one is word of knowledge. You're in Lagos. You have been complaining. Tomorrow, wear suit. Wear suit. Go to some firm. When you enter, say, the way they will greet you, even your self-esteem will go up. Tell them you came to see how they invest in their business. You want to see if you, if you, if you plug into it. Go to some company. Sit down. Listen. Wear, iron your suit very well. Wear your tie. Sit down. Listen to them. 
pick ideas from them. See, if you don't even know what you need to plug into certain things, then you don't even know what to pray. Because there are places you will go, your eye will tear open. You can now go and say, God, you know I've never had two million in my life. Not even just one deposit as in combined. <laughs> but right now I need seven million to plug it. <laughs> Please, you are my source. Show me how seven million is to enter people's hands. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's so important. Give yourself exposure. Some business seminars you have ins insulted, go and apologize. Go and listen. Go and pay attention. Consider. Read. It is well. If you have data on your phone, you don't even need to buy a lot of books. I'm telling you, so much online, right? Read, think, expand your thinking. All right? Praise God. So basically, you are saying that the more they interact with knowledge, even the ideas of what the streams of income will be will start to come to them. Great. Exactly. Amazing. Exactly. So someone asked the question about debt. How can he deal with debt? So he didn't know much that he knows now. So possibly he doubled into debt. And in this culture of loan apps and loan companies a lot of people have been collecting loans entering into debt so what would be your counsel to such a person i am so glad this question came up because i actually missed it in my presentation um <laughs> we live in a world of credit 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 <laughs> it's a trap very is a trap so before i answer the guy who's already in the situation let me answer people who are considering it let me tell you, every time you focus so much on what's available to you that you can take, you lower your endurance threshold. We're supposed to have an endurance threshold. I tell people something. Let me see. I'll be frank with you. If I check my life right now, I'll be searching for designers. Nobody designer now they look for. When I see people buy some things at a certain amount, I they laugh. Money I can't do better thing. You may think I'm just stingy or I don't like myself. Thank you. You that like yourself, keep wearing 50,000 naira belt and 200,000 naira shoe. Uh, keep wearing it. You know, I tell people, some people don't have business holding the iPhone they hold. iPhone. They are carrying iPhone. You know, I was jokingly telling somebody, if they steal your phone and you cannot replace it in 30 minutes, that phone is more than you. Do you get what I mean? That's why, that's why we used to crack the joke in Nigeria. Broke girl, urgent 2K, but she's using iPhone. Is that not a fool? Proper fool. See, we get into debt a lot of times because we crash our own endurance threshold. I can enjoy my process. I told somebody, if I was with a friend, he was calling for a flight to be booked for him. He, very funny man. I know he, he has money. It's not that he doesn't have money. But he was telling the agent, give me the cheapest ticket on. <laughs> I began to laugh. I said, sir, if you are looking for cheapest ticket, me, I will buy, I will buy engine seat. So that if there's any seat in the engine, me, I'll fly engine. You are looking for cheapest seat. Do you get what I'm saying? I give you the story of a man before I answer the man who's already in debt problem. I know the story of a man who right now is retired and earns from his properties at least 12 million a year. That means in retirement, he, 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 he has a capacity to spread his Retirement income, one million a month. How did he attain it? For years, every time his friends speak to him, he tells them, ah, God is helping us. Everything is tight. Do you know what was happening? The man was pouring all his income into properties and living like a broke person. All. Living like a broke person for years. Now he's retired. As I said, when we're talking about this, this guy was earning at least 12M from his properties in Nigeria every year. At least 12M. Now, so you see all those loan apps. The next thing, loan. There's a sound. Okay, the next thing, loan apps and the likes uh, does to people, which is very terrible. Um, is that from me or from your end? I think it's from my end. I used to hear it. Yeah. Okay. The next, see, I say number one, it tampers with your endurance threshold. It makes you easily take things that can make you suffer eventually. Number two, it tampers with your faith life. Your faith life. Do you know there are things you should believe God for? 
that loan app can just crash your belief to put you in more trouble. I give you an example. <laughs> there are certain things people should be praying about. They are taking loan on loan that they cannot pay. So it takes away that capacity to stay and pray. Okay, you're already in the situation. The first thing you need to know, you're already there. The Bible says, oh no man, nothing but love. Propose in your heart that that debt you pay it at all costs. Not sinful, but at all costs. Number two, I know loan apps in Nigeria have started embarrassing people, sending messages to all your contacts, calling you out. Right. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. If, see, don't evade the people. Go to them. I am not running anywhere. Now, you're already in a mess. If you have to sell assets, even personal property, do. I've been in places where I had to help people come up with a strategy. Go to them and propose a payment plan. I'm already in a mess. Sending message to my contact will change nothing. See me. I'm not running anywhere. I have seven shoes. I will sell five. Even if it's a giveaway. I have 10 shirts. I will sell eight. So that I can wear one to your office. From this month, I will be paying like this. I will clear it. Propose in your heart. When you do that, the next thing you do, go in prayer. Lord, I don't want to steal. I don't want to owe no man. I'm in this trouble. I don't even know the way out. But you are my source. Add prayer to it. Add prayer to it. See, somebody got me in a financial mess in 2018. This thing I'm telling you. And the mess was such that there are people who respect me that I needed to make refund to. The relationship was is sustained till date because of how I handled it. If you are the one owing somebody, don't make them call you. Be the one to call them. Some will still be offended, but call them. Be the one to say, I know this thing is due next month. From what I can see, I'm in trouble. Please be patient with me. You are the one to send update to say, I will come good with this money. Guess what happened? I just sat down. I kept pushing. One time I had one big fund coming. You know what I did? I just had my book. Me and my wife started making lists. All the troubles in our life. Started addressing them. I sat in one spot, seat transfer. Fiam, fiam. Out of my life. Out of my life. Get out. Get out. Get out. But where do miracles come from? It comes first of all because I proposed in my heart to honor God's word. You see that debt? I will pay it. Then your faith begins to rise. I will pay this debt. This debt will not sink me. So propose in your heart that you do it and God will help you do it. Then from there, of course, you have learned your lesson. Learn to suffer rather than suffer for the future by taking your year loan. All right? Okay. Um, so I, um, I see another question here. Someone is asking, is it wise to allocate monthly uh, allowance as a girlfriend allowance? Do you need scriptural backup to this? The concept of girlfriend allowance. Well, it's just a, it's a personal decision. It has nothing to do with scripture. I only said faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. All right? You want to be careful not to carry load that you cannot continue to carry. But if you are able to and you do that, you are showing yourself as a man. I'll give this example, just casual example. For everything that comes to me, um, I propose in my heart, so and so percentage goes to my wife as my love. Finish. So, if she was a girlfriend and I have money, I'll do that without thinking. It's normal. Like, for everything that comes to me, I'll be sending so and so to you. Because I love you anyway. You get? But like I said, it's not an obligation, it's a choice. You're not, you never marry him. Maybe mm. say you can't fund another person's wife and I can't break up. You can't calculate how you don't send her 22 million in, in two years. <laughs> <laughs> okay so moving past that someone asked a question about what's your advice or what would be your counsel to a young man who is burdened um, financially um, with financial burdens from home say you are carrying the responsibility of your family what would be your counsel to such a person keep carrying <laughs> see let me tell you see there are people I no longer pick their call. 
She, I'm the one that identifies myself as distributor. I know they pick her again. Some people are reckless. They will run you down. See, somebody I made that describe the crab mentality, pulling down syndrome. They want all of you to be equalized before they are happy. Do you understand? See, there are certain times you call me and I say, oh, so sorry. It's not because I don't have. It's that what is in my heart, hand is seed to sow. So that tomorrow, when I have more, I can actually help you. Hmm. So when I'm saying, see, if you think every time there's money in your hand, you can do Father Christmas, then you are thinking wrongly. So there's a portion I can give. Once I clear that portion, for I, I give you an example, clear example. There are times you call me for money. People have done it more than once, tw thousands of times. You are speaking to me about money. My account actually has money that they spell M-I-L-L. -L. But when I do my own math of my life, me, I'm actually in debt, plus million that I can see. For instance, I'm a, I'm a professional. Sometimes client funds can be in my hand. Lots of money. You see a client fund, see money. Money will not be your own, but you're feeling fly, feeling rich. Or you even get some payment, but your rent is in two months. Your children's school fees is next month. The house needs so, so, and so. Then somebody now calls you. You now feel like, oh, I get 500K. Waiting the person they ask, not just 20K. And especially those kind of ones that have made themselves a perpetual, repetitive dependence. Let me tell you, you don't owe any adult. Hey, some people just say, this guy is wicked. I'm a distributor. If I can speak like this, you better listen. Distributor number one is talking. If distributor can talk like this, you better take it. Jason, now let me tell you a very cautious ground. I walk this ground cautiously, but let me tell you. Even parents, some of them come to the point where they become overbearing. I've had cause to tell somebody before, you better keep your parents unnecessary. If not, they'll kill you. Because that particular person, the mother was a... The mother will pick up bills that were ready to kill the son. Mad bills. You're already paying rent. You're already giving a monthly allowance. This woman will go and pick up problem and dump on the son. No. You say, Mama, I cannot. I cannot. If they no longer have a source of income and I can put you on basic to help you as my mother out of love, then you just go somewhere. Say, um, I went to church. Building project is going on. I pledge 500000 <laughs> oh, because you are my mother or my father. Hey, you pledge 500,000. So you went to do pledge so that me, I can contribute the pledge. You are joking. I'm sorry. It's not disrespect. It's not dishonor and I'm not cursed. Your blessing still goes with me. What do you owe dependents necessaries? You don't even owe dependent prosperity. You owe them necessaries. They should go and prosper. So if, if they fall in the category of dependents, what do you owe them? Necessaries. And even that necessaries, where you can see, you don't do what you are not capable of doing. Even God will not require of you to do what you are not capable of doing. All right? Wow. I hope we are, we are coming to the end of this show. Okay, let me just ask this one more question. Um, because this is a very, very um, nagging issue. I don't know what I would phrase this question well. How much money does a man need to have before he starts thinking of marriage? <laughs> a man doesn't need to have money to start thinking of marriage. A man needs to a man needs to have purpose and have a God behind him. I'll give you a very simple story, and I'm not lying. When we got married, my wife was earning 10 times my salary, 10 times. She got a government job. I just started as a lawyer. I married two months after my NYC. I passed out in October. Our wedding was in December. We actually did our traditional as a couple. Because traditional happened a couple of months um, before that. Um, what we had was two of us, love. We had dedication. We had God backing us. And um, we decided to start where we were. I have no problem telling people that I actually married through crowdfunding. If there's some, something like that. Then it was not called crowdfunding. I first child, first son. If I when I cut some issues, my dad, my pastor's wife drew my ear. See, I found me angry. 
If your father does not marry for you, who should he marry for? I got my lesson, I kept quiet. Not that I'm irresponsible, as you can see. Like, I was working on the... In fact, coincidentally, I was working for the same man. If he paid me more, I'd have married more easily. So he, he took... I mean, he literally funded things. God is good. Why? Julia and I factored that if two of us can breed in our respective homes and carry on our life, the two of us can and merge it with William. Are you not already alive? I know wedding costs can be expensive. Please, this is not just a marketing strategy. But that's why I have a four-part series in my book, Help and Me Love, Getting Married on Any Budget, where I actually explained my story. Let me give you see, people don't even know how to pull on their normal social capital. Part of why I married the way I married and when I married was, I looked around, people that I could fund with my low level were getting married under my nose. I was watching them get married. And I now began to pick the lessons on which they were getting married. Social capital. Do you know if you never choose to get married, there are people in your life who are to give you money when you choose to get married, who will never give that money because you didn't choose to get married. I'm not saying you should bank yeah. on people, but there's something called social capital. I'm serving faithfully in my church and I can see very clearly that every time a person wants marry, at least this group comes together and says 10K. I loosely count 10K as part of the plan. I have friends. I have family. I'm not saying come and give me money. I don't ask anybody. But I will put you in position to give me money through strategy. There are people that when you visit and declare wedding, something will gum you. Then keep it low. Keep it simple. Particularly if two of you have agreement. That's where a lot of people miss it. Two of us were agreed. So both of us were going to work from both sides. She was working on her side. See, some ladies, eh? It's a, it's a men's forum principally, but you know some ladies, man, they are the reason why they will, they will stay single for longer. Your father is acting up. You can't go and meet him and say, Papa, you won't make her remain for this house. Lower hand, though. Your, your parents' first reaction will be, you want to sell yourself cheap. Papa, I know be commodity. I know be commodity. I've told ladies before, for example, go and reason with your father. Do you prefer you marry me out and I bring grandchildren or you want me to bring pregnancy? I'm not getting your man there. You they talk too much. If you give me belly, or be one, you even want me to be <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't like to. Oh my God. So both of you must get strategic and begin to see how you convert your disadvantage to advantage. This thing I just say is part of it. I want to marry. See my capability because the problem is the wedding cost, not the living cost. Do you know? It is where. Wow. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. This was such an enlightening session. A lot of light bulb moments. We can't even stop. But there is much more from where this, this source is coming from. So please go and check him out on his social media, um, Relationship and Marriage, on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. He talks about literally anything and everything relationship and marriage related. I'm so sure you're going to get much more than what we can possibly do in less than two hours. So please follow him. He has been a blessing to my life for years. And I'm sure he will bless you as well. So God bless you so much, sir. I'm so, so grateful for doing this. I know it took you a lot. Thank you. Doing this from doing a program. God bless you. God bless yeah. you. Thank you so Thank much, you. sir. Thank you. All right. All right, guys, I hope you were blessed by this. We continue tomorrow. We continue tomorrow, and it's going to be even much more. Um, I expect one of my mentors, and we're talking about mentorship. So please make it a day, same time um, tomorrow by 8 p.m. We're coming back here again to learn from another person, another vessel that. God is going to be speaking true. So hope you were blessed by this. So let's head back to the community groups and begin to share what stood out for us, what we learned. And in case you may have any questions, you can connect with him on social media, send him a DM or an email. He will be able to put you through. But I personally think that his resources out there would answer any question you have and much more. So dive into his um, channel, YouTube channel, his page on Instagram, on Facebook. You will learn a lot, I promise you. God bless you all um, and see you again tomorrow. Good night.